Liel, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. It's me, Kim. I am going to be podcasting while I am convalescing, while I'm recovering from my surgery. I've talked at length about my surgery behind the paywall. If you know, want to know exactly what's happened and how I'm doing, you can upgrade. But this is free for anybody. Anybody who subscribes, love y'all, appreciate y'all over here. I do not have a desire to set up the camera and lights, but I do have a desire to talk about some mess. So I'm going to do that until I am fully recuperated, until I'm feeling up and ready and excited and enthusiastic to put on makeup and do my hair and set up the DSLR. Until then, you, you get my unfiltered thoughts over here. All right. It has been a crazy week. Man, let me just tell y'all, appreciate your body, respect your body, take care of your body. Go to the doctor. If you have access to insurance, utilize it. Get on Obamacare as effed up as Obamacare is. I'm so thankful that I have access to health care through the marketplace because I will never, ever, ever again in my life take for granted the ability to get up and walk around and take care of myself and brush my teeth and comb my hair ever. That's enough of that serious stuff. We are here to talk about Summer House Martha's Vineyard. I was going to do a, a little bit of a, a podcast about Real Housewives of Potomac, but honestly, Potomac does not deserve it. Potomac does not deserve any of my time, my energy. I am so annoyed at that franchise. And I think Andy is annoyed at that franchise too. He did not seem to be super enthralled, interested, entertained. I feel like he rolled his eyes a couple times during that second part of the reunion. I can't say that I am a, a Candace lover, but I like Candace a lot. I think it's really sad that she is going to be gone next season. And Candace is the only person who has the capacity to humble Giselle. Giselle has gotten on my motherfucking nerves with that neck, that gullet. That's not what a gullet is. Okay, let me not get my, my country uh, chicken parts messed up. That neck, that, that gobble. I'm so annoyed by her. Just, she's a fashion show with no fashions. She is elitism with no credentials, no skills, no resume. What have you done? Giselle, what have you done? Besides be cute, go to Howard, become an AKA and get married and have it like nothing, nothing. And has have the nerve to be uppity, try to look down on people, try to question people. Girl, tacky ass house, tacky ass fashions. I watched Carlos King's live and somebody said she looked like she got that dress from Montgomery Ward. Girl, oh, I am just old enough to know what Montgomery Ward's is. It wasn't giving I just think she has gotten way too much for way too long. Beautiful, great gown. Well, not great gowns. I was going to say great gowns. That's, that's a lie. I was going to say beautiful woman, great eyes. I don't know, beautiful eyes. Is that going to be the new? Great eyes, but nothing else. The reads, that fucking menopausal mean girl energy is not fun to watch. When Karen does it, when Karen throws shade or throws a little quit for a comment out there. It's fun. It's funny. It's snappy. But, you know, she knows exactly how far to go. There's something about Giselle giving us nothing, giving us no story, giving us barely a personality that is hinged on being uppity, elite, and mean, but you don't have anything to show for it that grinds my motherfucking gears. As I mentioned in uh, my last exploration, my last little podcast, I really did not realize that Candace has actually done stuff like undergrad, grad school, worked in the White House, won the pageant. Like I didn't I did not know that about her. Like and that, and now she is trying to pursue a a singing career which no, mm, no. But you know what? We all have dreams. We all have dreams. We all have goals. But it's going to be a no. I just respect Candace a lot more than I respect Giselle. I thought that Giselle, when Candace, I said I, this wasn't going to be a, a Potomac, but I'm sorry, you have to go. When I think Candace is genuinely hurt by the dissolution of her, 
her relationship with Robin. I think that friend breakups are difficult. Now, Candace absolutely has to take some blame in that. Like, I think with the crying over Robin thing, people don't aren't responding the way that she probably wants them to respond because she took an active role in severing that that relationship with Robin. You know, once you start talking on the internet and on podcasts, on social media, it's hard for anybody to come back from that. But the other thing is like, Candace, why are you trying to mend fences with somebody who actively talks shit about your man? Now look, I I don't consider myself to be a my man, my man, my man ass bitch. I really don't. I think I'm honest about my relationship. I'm honest about my partner, but you don't get to say shit about my partner. You do not. You do not. And we will never come back from it. We will never be cool again. After you try to malign my partner's character, there is no mending fences. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You've crossed the line. You've crossed a bridge with me. And, and if you are trying to malign his character with some sexual, well, we won't say sexual assault shit, but we'll say um, sexual misconduct shit, we're done. And I might, because I'm a crier, you know, I'm a, I'm a Pisces crier, I might be overwhelmed by sadness about, man, it didn't have to be this way, but I'm not overwhelmed in I wish we could be friends again. We cannot be friends again. So when Candace was crying about that and then Giselle does her tears, tears, tears thing and Giselle trying to be like jump on the unbothered mean girl thing, girl, we know that this is all you have. We know that when she walked out on that set and saw that she was not first chair, when she walked out on that set in that Nordstrom rack dress, I'm sorry, that's mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't laugh. I'm sorry. It hurts to laugh too hard. Oh, my stitches. When she walked out on set, saw Andy sitting um, in her Ross dress for less designer shoes in the Nordstrom rack dress. And saw that Karen had first seat on one side and Mia had first seat on the other side. You know she was hurt. Because historically, Giselle has sat closest to Andy. And so all she could give was a performance of how unbothered and above it all she was. Did not like that. Love Karen Huger. Love her. Dr. Wendy. I'm sorry, girl. I, gorgeous girl. Gives nothing. Mia really didn't give anything until the end. But baby... She has showed up. She has really showed up for the reunion. Once all of that stuff came tumbling out of the closet, she said, well, let's open this motherfucker up. Oh, is skeletons in there and one came out? Well, let's let them all come tumbling out. When somebody, who was it? Was it Dr. Wendy who tried to ask her about, well, wasn't there a rumor that Ink came to your house trying to get your son because Ink thought the son was his? And when he was like, yeah, and what about it? <laughs> Ariana Grande voice. And what about it? And then we saw a, a little peek backstage of Mia FaceTiming Ink, her new boyfriend, while Gordon, her husband, is right beside her. Mia, you got to teach the girls a lesson. You know, I have historically said over and over again that city girls feminism is embarrassing. And it is. It truly is. Because the girls who have made the most off of quote unquote city girls feminism or I don't give a fuck or, uh, you know, fuck these niggas or whatever feminism. Secretly, they are the worst pick me's. They, they go out the saddest. They lose the most. They get locked up trying to fight over men. They lose their reputation trying to fight over men, but they're like, Oh no, like fuck you nigga. But it's like, that's not how they're really living. Mia is really living it. And if that is your MO, and you're really living it, I have no problem with it. You married this man, got this man to fuck up his family, leave his leave his wife, leave his family to be with you, and you still get to keep the love of your life, your long-term boyfriend on the side, and as soon as the man who fucked up his family and uprooted his life to be with you, as soon as he doesn't have money anymore, you say, oh, I'm, I'm actually going to go back public with the love of my life, and both of those men are still there, that's a different level. 
that's a different level of finesse. We rarely see it. And I just, I appreciate somebody who lives their raps. That's what Mia is doing. Oh, that's enough of, of Potomac. I forgot to say, the Pop Girl Power Bracket voting is still on. I messed up a little bit of the settings, and so it automatically went from quarterfinals to semifinals. But what we're going to do is we're going to extend quarterfinals voting, despite the fact that it has automatically published the semifinals win it, winners. Those semifinals winners are tentative. So those are not the official semifinals winners. So you still have time. If you see who has tentatively won for the semifinals and you're like, oh, fuck no, you can still vote for the quarterfinals. I think quarterfinals voting and semifinals voting we're going to do at the same time. And then on April 7th, I think, is when the semifinals, like the real semifinals voters will be announced. So vote, vote, vote. Uh, we still have some really good, I, I think I know based on the prediction brackets, I have a really good idea. I think of who y'all are going to crown the number one pop girl billboard number one hit, but there's still time to vote. Okay. We talked about Potomac, even though I said I wasn't going to talk about Potomac, but you know, I couldn't help it. We've gone the pop girl power bracket. Y'all vote, 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 vote. And now let's talk about Summer House Martha's Vineyard. I really enjoyed Summer House Martha's Vineyard, the first season. Did I think it was spectacular? No, but most first seasons of reality shows are not spectacular. You have to do a lot of world building, a lot of relationship recaps, you know, friendship recaps. And I feel like Summer House Martha's Vineyard season two is where we will really see whether or not it is something that is sustainable. So I thought we're on season two, episode two, and I'm just going to go down the um, the cast list and discuss the cast list. All right, let's start with Alex. Alex is a creative. He's a singer. He's a poet. I mean, really, he's a professional fuckboy. He is tall. He is good looking. I mean, you know, I'm not going to front on him. But do I think that he is particularly charming or talented? No. And this is another one of those instances where I am so glad that I'm five feet tall and I don't have to be obsessed with height the way that y'all are because y'all empower the tall, moderately attractive men to wreak havoc. Y'all empower them to be absolutely pieces of shit human beings and shrug it off. So Alex, we knew he was a player. He admits to being a player. He was putting the moves on Summer last season. Obviously, they have hung out across the country since the last season. And he's trying to downplay it. But Summer obviously feels away and is kind of stewing over the fact that Alex is not giving her the kind of acknowledgement that she thinks she deserves as somebody who he slept with. Now, as bullshit as Alex is, and did I already mention that he can't even sing that good? Somebody's like, oh, he can sing, can he? I don't know, maybe my bar is really high because it's, it's fine. It ain't nothing to write home about. Okay, I actually understand the expectation that after you've had sex with somebody that they treat you with dignity and respect. I also think that when you are fucking somebody casually and y'all agree that it's casual and you know that the person that you are sleeping with self-identifies as a fuck boy, you have to, have to, have to lower your expectations. Put them on the floor. The bar's on the floor. The bar's on the ground. And so Summer, I hate to say it, she kind of, she kind of played herself expecting Alex to be anything more than what he said he was, expecting him to be kind, considerate, generous, thoughtful. He said that he told you that's not who he, who he is. Okay. And this is when we have to go back to what I've learned from the, the white version of Summer House. And it applies here. The girls cannot handle casual sex the way that they say they can. I absolutely believe that some women 
can handle casual sex. That there are women and men, because also some men go crazy too. That there are people who can fuck, set it, and forget it. Okay? Pick it up, flip it over, rub it down, keep it moving. But most people can't do that. And unfortunately, sometimes you think you can do it. And you can do it in some situations, but then you get into a situation where you pick it up, flip it over, rub it down and try to keep it moving. But it's not working the way that it did before. You know, sometimes you can't do the same thing with every single person. Some people just, you know, they tickle your fancy. You know what I mean? And I don't think Summer was prepared for what kind of hold that Alex would have on her. And so she's kind of doing she's taking it a bit far that scene when they're eating dinner the crab boil or whatever and she's mad at Alex because Alex had an event and did not invite her or Jordan it's one thing to be like hey that was fucked up you look we're cool I thought we were cool what but the kind of I'm sorry meltdown that she was having and the kind of meltdown that resulted in the dramatics of you didn't invite her. You you knew she was here. You didn't invite the person you've been inside of, girl. You're you're doing that to elicit a reaction. I get it because I we've been there. We've all been there. You're trying to you're trying to hit a nerve. It looks away when you are trying to hit a nerve from somebody who does not care. He doesn't care. And that's how he could keep it so cool. When Alex reacted to Summer saying, you didn't even invite the person you've been inside of. His reaction wasn't, oh my God, I'm so sorry I hurt you. His reaction was, why would you put my business out there like that? Because Alex is a fuckboy and fuckboys know that they cannot do what they do if all of their business is out in the street. Fuckboys need secrecy. They need silence. To keep moving the way that they want to move. All of their shit can't be out. And so his thing was not, oh, we have this special connection. Why would you want to tarnish it by just throwing it out there? His thing was, hey, 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 we got to keep it. We got to keep it under wraps. And so the next conversation they have about that is is on the boat, on the yacht. Man, I cannot be, wait to be on a yacht, girl. Woo, let my stitches heal. Let the swelling go down. We about to be out. Okay. So when Summer and Alex are having that conversation about Summer's outburst at the dinner table and Summer is saying, well, I just think that there is, there's just a way that you handle people because after you have sex with them, like you have like a love for them. And when she said love, I said, oh my God, please. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. No. No, you don't have to have a love for somebody just because you fucked them. No, that, that's not in the rules. That's in no part of the game. Do you have a responsibility to treat the people that you have sex with like humans? I think we have a responsibility to treat everybody like decent human beings with thoughtfulness and kindness. But love, a special favor, love. No, you don't. And I do not believe, I'm sorry, I don't believe that Alex said to Summer, you know, I love you, girl. You're my boo or or whatever. I don't think that that's it. I, I don't think he did that. I think that Summer has broken her own heart by filling in the gaps, by creating a story that she wanted, and she's not going to get that story. And I hate that for her because Alex is just, he's blank. He, he's blank. And when Amir was talking, when Amir was talking to Alex and Nick, you know, and he was explaining it like, you know, Summer's like, why would you do this to me? It's me. And Alex is like, yeah, it's you. Like, so, like, who are you? Like, that's exactly it. Alex is like, who are you? You're just another one of the girls I fucked. And now Summer had to go back and try to save face by being like, oh, he's a fuck boy. Like, I don't give a fuck. You know, that, you know the shit that we all do. I mean, you can't judge Summer too harshly because we're girls. We're girls. We've been there. We've all just staked a little bit too much into an into a man who was like, girl, I don't care. It happens. It's life. Que sera, sera. Next, Amir. I don't have a lot to say about Amir. He's still cute. The way that he talks about his relationship, though, is like, mm, is something going on? Do you need help? 
why are you, I don't like it when men talk about their significant others, their girlfriends, their wives, only in the context of fear. It's only about, oh, I can't do this or she's going to kill me. Or I can't do this. She would go crazy. If I did that, she would cut my, my nuts off. She would cut my balls off. Like, no. Let's talk about what do you love about her? Like, what is the, the draw of this relationship? How does she make you better? How has she enriched your life? But the way that Amir talks about Natalie as if she's like some controlling puppet mastermind is not ideal. And it makes me feel like he's overcompensating. And then we got that that little exchange in episode two where he texted her something and she texted him back like, hmm, what is this? This does not make sense in the context of our conversation. It makes me think like, hmm, is Amir texting other bitches? Yes or no? Are you texting other bitches? Yes or no? I don't know. I really do not trust that at all. But I also like that Amir, he generally, when it comes to the gender stuff, has... He has a level head, and I liked the uh, care that he extended to Preston. Bria, obviously I'm going in alphabetical order. I like in in alphabetical order. Okay, I didn't like Bria. Bria's not my cup of tea, but she is who she is. I don't like that spoiled, entitled thing. The stuff that she did with the dog last season is, is automatically going to be a no for me. But she seems fun. Jasmine. So Jasmine is obviously pregnant. I think she just had a baby. So she was clearly pregnant on the show. She has just had a baby in real life. I am interested in why she chose to conceal her pregnancy because if this show was filmed in July, August, I mean, okay, so she's first trimester. It's not it's not unusual for people to want to conceal pregnancy first trimester it just seemed like jasmine was on an island during these first two episodes of season two and it's interesting because she was supposed to be the glue that tied all of these people together but now her husband is gone he's deployed she's pregnant she has to keep the secret and all of the rest of these people aren't really fucking with her i think jasmine means well I think that she is trapped in a marriage of opportunity and desperation, right? A survival marriage, if you will. And if you're trapped in a survival marriage, there's only so much you can do. She needed a place to stay. She needed somebody who was going to come in and pay the bills. She needed stability. Are Jasmine and Silas madly in love? No, they didn't even know each other for real before they got married. (laughs) No. And now they're having a baby, add a baby to the mix, girl. But it's whatever. Look, women have been engaging in survival marriages since the dawn of time. So good luck to you. But know that that's going to have an impact on your relationships. It is what it is. I hope that she and Jordan can figure it out because it does seem like they had a genuine connection. But if Jordan says, look, I don't want to be a party to your survival marriage and your your sham marriage and your sham um, relationship, um, we're going in two different ways. I do not blame her at all. OK, next, Jordan. Now, as much as I understand Jordan um, wanting to separate from Jasmine because she feels like Jasmine switched up on her, there is something about Jordan that is not all the way clicking for me. I do feel like she's a little too self-serious and a little too, I can't say uppity, right? Because that has, that has undertones, but just, I don't know. It feels like she takes herself a little too seriously. Maybe I'm, I'm just not catching the parts of the show where they show her just being carefree and having fun and being wild. But it seems like every time we are cutting to Jordan, She's talking about, oh, Jasmine's not who she used to be or, you know, Nick is on my body or so-and-so and so-and-so. It's like, girl, you're on a reality show. Like, shake some ass. Is that wrong? I don't know. I'm probably being problematic here. She does seem smart, though. Now, I will tell you, of all the people on this show, the two people that I would actually sit down and have a conversation with, Jordan 
and Preston. I mean, I've literally sat down and had several conversations with Preston. So, you know, it is what it is. But I would definitely sit down with Jordan. She seems like she knows things. And I respect that. Next on my list, Noelle. Oh, actually, if we're going about in alphabetical order, it's Nick. Nick is a fucking creep. He's a fucking creep. And I actually had to go and look up the ages of these people because I'm like, why am I so disgusted by this behavior? We're the same age. These are people in their mid-30s acting like this, acting like it's a frat house. I'm like, oh my God, this is why the dating pool is the way it is. Because these men, 33, 34, 35 year old men acting like that, when Alex was talking about Summer wanting more and kind of acting out because she wants more. And Nick talked about rebeat. Rebeat? Who even says that? We didn't even say that in college. We didn't even say that back in 2008. Like, what is going on? Who said? I was so. And this 34-year-old man talking like that, when you have a long-term girlfriend... Oh, baby, if I was the girlfriend, first of all, we know the girlfriend can't have any self-respect. Can't. No self-respect, no self-esteem, because if you are still dating this man after how he did you last season, you're down bad. You're down real, real bad. So, Tasia, Tasia, babe, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Tasia. I'm praying for you. Let's have a prayer circle for Tasia because she needs to make a move. I'm speaking like that about the Alex and Summer situation, him just being a creep to all the women, being overly touchy-feely, trying to be next to their booties and stuff. It's like, what is going on? This is embarrassing. And, and he thinks he's cuter than he is. And he does not dress cute. Listen, so you know, uh, coming from where I come from and going to the the social circles and the the college that I went to, it's a lot of Knicks who think just because you got, just because you got on some boat shoes, you think that you're really doing something. Just because you got a pair of Sperry's, you really think you're doing something. No, it's not cute. I'm not impressed. You have a Lacoste polo and some Sperry's. It's not cute. Moving on, Noelle. I like Noelle a lot. I think she's fun. She's bubbly. Her hair is laid. I'm sorry. I'm a black woman. I give you a lot of points if your hair is laid. I like the color of it. She, at this point, is the only person really bringing like fun, razzle dazzle, pizzazz with her little heiress party, her groovy party. I thought that was fun. She just seems cute. And she hasn't had the opportunity to be in any mess. So that really helps her. I hope that she stays out of the mess. And I also liked that Noelle, she made it known to Summer, hey, like, I know you've hooked up with this dude and I kind of like him. What's the tea on y'all? Like, what's the backstory? Not just making a move on him without consulting, you know? And then, of course, Summer lied to her about it. But Noelle just being like, look, I don't, I'm not trying to get in no mess. So if y'all have hooked up, I do not want to do that. I like that about her. So shout out to her. She said she's from, she said she's from Atlanta. Okay, shout out to Atlanta. Who's next? Preston. I like Preston a lot, obviously. Obviously. Anybody who follows me knows I like Preston a lot. We've worked together so many times over the years. Um, he's smart. He has a good personality. He has interesting backstory. Now, as much as I like Preston, I did see some stuff that indicates that maybe he was not 100% telling the truth about the whole situation with his father. So on the show, I actually, one, I absolutely do believe that the father was a, a deadbeat homophobe. A hundred percent. I think the question was the story that Preston told about his father's side of the family, not inviting him and his sister to the funeral. I think that might not have been 100% true. I think what actually happened was they were invited, but the funeral was on the second day of filming. 
and Summer House Martha's Vineyard films consecutively over two weeks. And so if you miss two days of filming, baby, you missed a lot. That's some prime camera. And look, am I going to give up prime camera time to celebrate my homophobic deadbeat dead father and his family that I don't have a relationship with? Uh, no, but you should have just said that. Don't lie on the family and say that the family has intentionally tried to shut you out when that is not what happened. But it is what it is. We all cope the way that we cope. Preston is going to remain one of the, the fan favorites because he just, he has sense and he's fun and he's reasonable and he's smart. So that's that. Two more. We have Shanice. Now Shanice, Shanice is uh, tacky, messy, and thirsty for me. For me, I think it does make a difference that these are people in their mid thirties, you know, I think it's fine to be like, I love dick. I'm just trying to get some dick. I just want to show my boobies. I just want to have fun. Like, girl, show your boobies. Have fun. The meltdown over Summer saying that she dresses the worst. To me, uh, girl, you wore a tube top and some, some Lululemon pants to the dress up party. Like, I'm sorry. Like, what do you want me to say? You wore a sports bra. And some spandex pants to the, the costume party. You are poorly dressed. Take a lick in and keep on ticking. Like, let's move on. And then we have to get the stop story about, oh, she knows I just lost my job and I, and I don't have clothes. And I was like, you know what? That was kind of fucked up of your friend to put you out there like that. But then uh, a couple scenes later at the gym and she's reflecting on her interactions with Summer, but Shanice is at the gym and she's reflecting on her interactions with Summer. And she says, I think Summer's just jealous of me because when we went on vacation and I told her about all these ballers that I was talking to and, you know, Summer was just jealous because I could get all these ballers and she cannot. And it's like, now, now I don't even feel any sympathy for you because the question is, you're talking to all these ballers. You have all these ballers in your phone and none of them can take you shopping. Huh, fascinating. You're bragging on TV about how all of these um, high rollers and non-regular men are in your phone and you hook up with them and they fly you out and you are showing up to the costume party in a sports bra in spandex pants. Hmm, I have some questions. Shanice, do what you do. Have fun. Be free, but don't get too comfortable. And then I already talked a lot about summer. Summer is just one of them days that a girl goes through with summer. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I can't laugh. I'm sorry. She's going through it. She's going through the motions. Pretty girl, cute girl. She just got caught up with the fuck boy. And it's going to take some time for her to, to recuperate. It's going to take some time for her to get her bearings, to honestly get her reputation back together. Because because once a fuck boy has you out here looking crazy, girl, it's going to take a minute. I believe in her. She can get back on track. And you know what I was thinking? Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Sorry, we're back to Potomac. Gordon, I don't even know what to make of him because he must not have no, no pride. He has no pride. He is rock bottom. Gordon said, and I'm telling you, I am not going to Mia. Showing up to the reunion? He showed up to the reunion to tell the cast and national TV that the son that he's been claiming is not his son. Gordon, just go. Where's your first wife at? Where are your other kids at? Imagine, oh my God, Gordon has adult children. Imagine that's your daddy. Imagine that's your dad. The embarrassment. I can't deal. Okay, so that's my Real Housewives of Potomac wrap up. Vote in the pop girl power bracket still open. And that is my Summer House Martha's Vineyard wrap up. That concludes this edition of, I don't know, we're going to call it Breakfast with Kimberly, the, the podcast edition. I don't know, but I'm not making videos, guys. So it is what it is. I just have to get my thoughts out. 
leave a comment down below. Feel free to like and share the newsletter. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.